Hello and welcome back to another episode of HVAC system design tutorial with the channel of the world of building design. So in this tutorial, we are going to continue on the VRF or variant refrigeration flow uh, HVAC system. Uh, we are going to touch on a number of other uh, design consideration in this type of um, systems and uh, what are the parameters and important aspects of this type of design that you need to consider as an HVAC system designer. As we touched on this before, the, the VRF system is kind of ideal for multiple zones with various sizes. We, we talked about uh, when we have a facility uh, with a different type of usage and different type of uh, temperature control requirement and occupancy, type um, this is a good application because you can provide the heating and cooling at the same time uh, different temperature control and um, and another important factor is that if you have individual occupancy schedule that that needs to be in place in a facility uh, and requires uh, independent control uh, from other other part of the buildings. This gives a very good um, you know diversity in terms of the occupancy, uh, schedule in various spaces and uh, provides the independency on the temperature control uh, based on uh, the, the zone that is dedicated during the design. Another benefit to this system uh, is that um, you don't need to occupy a very large mechanical rooms or the building doesn't need to dedicate a very major space for the mechanical system other than the outdoor unit that goes to the roof of the building or you know adjacent to the building on the ground most of the other terminal units and the piping occupy pretty much uh, very minimal spaces in a facility compared to other hvac system alternatives so looking at this schematic uh, of a building where there are multiple occupancy you might have a meeting room you might have offices or other type of occupancy which might be totally different from the occupancy the load diversity and the uh, and also the uh, the temperature control requirements so uh, you have to consider that when it comes to a building design and some of the key question i would like to come up with uh, when you discuss with your clients and uh, you want to assess and evaluate the condition of the design or what kind of design consideration you have to take into account when it comes to a VRF system for a building. You want to know your client and occupant preference. They might have different experiences. They might want to discuss about like the presence of refrigerant in the building. There are different concerns coming from the occupant oftentimes that uh, an HVAC designer needs to, to review and discuss that with the client uh, and, and uh, listen to their preference. Um, there might have been different aspects from their perspective that might be important from sound and vibration in the space, uh, noise, uh, dedicated and delicate uh, control, temperature, humidity control. Other things that you need to review about the building is that you have to understand what is the condition of the building's existing uh, HVAC infrastructure. Are there uh, currently dock work in the building or major piping? You know, do you have sufficient space in your ceiling space with this new uh, system be an addition to the existing system or is it going to be acting fully independently and what ratio of the the load the new vrf system would take on other consideration you have to look into your local weather and building code condition because the local weather would tell you about your uh, you know ultimate um, cooling and heating degree days and uh, would give you an idea if a vrf system indeed is a very efficient system for your uh, geographical area. Sometimes you might need to provide additional uh, supplemental feeding and cooling. Also the building code, uh, there might be uh, some narratives around um, you know control of the refrigerant and the volume of the refrigerant in the building that you need to be concerned about uh, from the building uh, code perspective in your uh, jurisdictional area. When it comes to VRF system, if you install such a system in a larger building with a considerable volume of the refrigerant uh, circulating throughout your entire system, you might need to know what is your local building code requires. Sometimes uh, operational engineers need to be stationed 
in your building. There, there are some uh, jurisdiction requirements. For example, in Canada, um, you need to have a, a operational engineer with the you know refrigeration certificate dedicated to uh, that 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 range of volume of the refrigerant um, for your system. Is that is that a skill set that the building or facility has already or uh, would the client need to consider uh, obtaining such uh, such um, you know engineer or um, you know uh, this kind of a skill set for the maintenance uh, team? As we said, the lowest uh, ambient heating design condition is a concern because you would need to understand if the supplement heating needed for the building because VRF when it runs in a heat pump condition, the outdoor condensing unit has some limit on the minimal temperature range. If your geographic area uh, or climatic um, area experiences temperature say below minus 4 degree Fahrenheit or lower than that, maybe your uh, heat pump doesn't operate as, as efficiently as you expect for covering the entire heating load of a building and you need to think about alternative supplement heating such as perimeter radiators or, or other, other systems that can boost the heating demand of your building. Other aspect would be the ventilation. You know, as you know, VRF system uh, in its nature doesn't provide a ventilation. You basically recirculate the air in a space and basically uh, provide temperature control. Either you bring down the temperature or you increase the temperature uh, based on the mood of operation in heating and cooling mode and uh, there is no measure of the fresh air entry to the VRF system. Even though the VRF uh, terminal units uh, can be supplemented with the outdoor air, but that's another question you have to ask from the client, whether you have already a fresh air or ventilation uh, input into the building and would your VRF system to be fully independent from the fresh air or you need to you need to consider that also as part of your design if the ventilation is uh, going to be added to your vrf system how that's going to happen would that be input into the into the space independently as a fresh air into the building or into different spaces or it has to be integrated into your vrf terminal units so these are also very important question needs to be asked in addition to humidity control if that's a concern because like if you design the VRF system for some spaces that requires more delicate humidity control say such as uh, healthcare or in the you know in some museum or uh, some of the application where the humidity is a very important factor into your temperature humidity control. You need to understand all of this ahead of the time. Just uh, wanted to do a very high level comparison in terms of the space occupation by the VRF system as opposed to other uh, classical form of uh, air distribution or hydronic system. So if you consider that you're, you're providing uh, 20 ton of cooling to a space using the, you know, the classical convention method using the air distribution system and also um, using the chill water system versus using the VRF. So on the left hand side as you can see to provide a 20 ton of cooling uh, through the air distribution system uh, basically you might need a, at least a dock work with the size of 40 inch by, by 20 inch for a low pressure dock system and how we know that is like if we're talking about 20 ton of cooling I would assume 400 CFM air to deliver one ton of cooling so you're basically looking at 8,000 CFM of air delivery to a space this is all based on a high level estimate a rule of thumb calculation so for 8,000 CFM at a velocity range of uh, 1500 uh, feet per minute uh, you would need a dock work at least 40 by 20 inch of size and that's equated uh, to a 30 inch round dock for um, as an equivalency of the rectangular dock. For the same cooling tonnage you might need uh, four sets of piping for your chill water supply return, condenser supply and return, three inch um, pipe you would need. This is the size of your chill water and condenser water pipe and compare this to hydronic and air distribution 
with the right hand side as your size of um, VRF piping, which you need only three quarter inch pipe diameter for the liquid line and uh, 1.38 inch for the gas line, which is very, very minimal uh, in the space occupation compared to the other aspects. So you can see that the VRF can give you uh, a lot of flexibility in terms of um, you know maintaining your maximum real estate without dedicating much space to your VRF uh, you know HVAC system while still providing all the heating and cooling requirement and offset that where you otherwise need to use the air distribution or the chill water hydronic system. When we talk about the zone, we said that you need to ask a number of questions. You need to ask about the location of your outdoor unit and uh, also um, are there currently ductwork in the building, how you have to run your refrigeration line uh, above the ceiling and across the building, if your building roof can tolerate the, the weight of a new condenser unit or not, otherwise you need to consider the other structural measures and also you need to look into the nature of the building usage as well. You have to consult this with your client to know what is the occupancy schedule in variety of the different spaces? These are all the major things you need to consider. So if you look at this schematic here, this is basically uh, uh, showing a, a floor of an off office area uh, on a high level basis. You, you know that you can have uh, multiple offices, uh, there's a conference room, um, there is a um, you know, uh, vice president office, foyer of a building, corridors, um, there are restrooms and coffee space and predominantly this is an office space. So how you would like to zone this space? There are multiple ways of zoning this and you know that when you provide multiple zone, each zone is provided by your um, temperature sensor or your um, thermostat which is uh, basically controlling your uh, local VRF terminal units. Looking at this floor plan, you have multiple options. One of the options is that you can basically provide the maximum number of the zone. Basically, you can provide 20 zone because we have uh, 20 space here. So for every single space, we created a zone. So we divided this whole floor plan to 20 zone. So that's basically can be uh, the most granular zoning option for you. Your second option is to break down this whole floor plan to three zones. And as you can see, the heating and cooling loads that uh, you have calculated for each of these spaces are shown um, with the unit of uh, kilo BTU to, to simplify this. For example, the office on the left-hand side, upper left-hand side where my cursor is, showing you as a 12,000 BTU as your load. And uh, you have uh, 14,000 for the VP office, 14,000 BTU. But in this case, uh, this option, which can give you the most cost effective option, splits the whole floor plan into three different zones. So that's one of the options. And basically you have one thermostat that's, um, that can control the whole zone one and each zone have controlled by its own thermostat. So you basically have three thermostat controlling this whole floor. In third option, you can split this whole building into seven zones. Looking at these seven zones is um, looking like there is some balance here. So you can see there are different colors. So each zone are represented by a different color. Still through this zone control, you have a good uh, controllability of the building. But at the same time, there has been some other concerns uh, have been addressed through this uh, verification and through this zoning. As you can see on the corners, there are separate zones number one and two and three because they might be potentially show different uh, temperature behavior because they are adjacent to the wall and they, they are potentially uh, have windows and uh, they would experience uh, uh, different heat transfer compared to the other spaces such as um, you know zone 5 which is a core zone in the core zone normally you don't have any adjacent wall so you don't have a lot of uh, uh, thermal heat transfer uh, with the building envelope so you can have uh, you can have its own specific control uh, with the core area all around the envelope of the building 
is basically divided uh, to multiple zones so um, they have uh, their own control and uh, as you can see um, the core is separated from the envelope envelope zone which creates a more balanced control approach so comparing these three options in the first option as you can see you have to select a 16 ton heat recovery outdoor unit you have uh, 20 uh, terminal boxes out of which 17 are half ton ducted you have one one ton one uh, one and a quarter ton and uh, number one two and a half ton Ducted. Let's bring up this very important fact here that the cost of option two would be lower than the cost of all these options. So from the costing perspective, option two is the best option. Option three is the second option and option one is the most expensive option. And when you look at the outdoor unit, uh, you will see that uh, you have a 16 ton outdoor unit on the option one, eight ton on the option two, and 10 ton on the option three. What this says to us is that the buildings, this floor plan that I just showed you, the total cooling load in that building is eight ton of cooling. But because uh, you are selecting multiple separate zones on the option one, you have to inevitably uh, select a 16 ton outdoor unit because there are limitation of the manufacturing of the uh, indoor uh, or terminal units for example if your space has even less than half a ton um, you know cooling load you can't select any unit smaller than a half ton ducted uh, terminal unit so you have to select the smallest size uh, from the manufacturer uh, and that, that's a rolling effect and makes your total cooling tonnage higher, a lot higher to 16 ton and it makes it a lot more inefficient. And that's why uh, your total cooling of the outdoor unit end up being 16 ton, even though you might not need that. But it, because you need to adjust your outdoor unit with the total of your indoor unit uh, capacity, you have to select a larger unit even though it's it's not matching up exactly with your total cooling load and that's why that's another reason where you get into more zoning and in the option two you can make this a lot more refined and get into eight ton outdoor unit with three uh, indoor terminal units and uh, the same uh, negative uh, impact of the option one applies to option three but this way, because you end up uh, creating seven zones, uh, you can have uh, you know a more uh, effective um, you know outdoor unit or more efficient outdoor unit. Not exactly uh, similar to to the total um, you know thermal load that you calculated, but still is very close to the requirement and creates some form of a balance here. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed in this channel of the World of Building Design, I recommend you to go ahead and subscribe and press on the bell and notification button to see the new tutorial as soon as they are posted. Thank you very much.